Good day, folks. Uh, this is Matthew Brown. Thanks for coming to Finding the Warmth of Our Sun here at Madison 365. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and YouTube. Hit subscribe and all that fun jet. So after talking, I guess, <laughs> a bit about uh, progressives and such for a couple weeks or so, looking at really, I mean, it wasn't just a couple weeks, but the GOP. <laughs> and there's been two things that have been really kind of running through my mind, not just right now, but in general over the last few years in looking at the history of the GOP. But really particularly thinking about where they are. Two writers and something they've been saying have really, I mean, it's really simple, two things. Uh, uh, Jamal Bowie has been saying that the Republicans, that the GOP views Democrats as illegitimate. Adam uh, Serwer of The Atlantic wrote an article a few years ago called The Cruelty is the Point. And he's been pushing this idea, cruelty is the point. He wrote that in the context of ICE and the Department of Homeland Security breaking up families at the border and through child detention. But that mentality can hold true. The idea of cruelty is the point is something that holds true in multiple aspects of the GOP. And this isn't anything that's that's particularly new, especially in the context of white American conservatism in the United States. The GOP hasn't always been representative of that entity or that movement as Democrats once were the representative of that and, you know, the Confederacy. But times change, things change. There's really a, uh, you know, you start seeing this shift, particularly with the voting base during FDR. But cruelty has always been the point. You see that in, well, you look at what happened during chattel, chattel slavery, with Jim Crow and the overthrow of Reconstruction and the terror, even the rise of our prison industrial complex, which is immensely cruel, particularly when you compare it to the Scandinavian states that have far less people that recommit crimes. You look at about 20 percent of those that are incarcerated end up being reincarcerated within uh, some of these Scandinavian nations. They actually focus on rehabilitation, not punishment. Throughout ours, cruelty seems a system seem, cruelty seems to be the point. Be it police and their ability to legally accost violence upon you with minimal legal recourse, regardless of really anything. They can just say they're afraid. And in and, and your detention, there's so many ways for them to cause violence upon you, regardless of what you have done or, potential, or potentially have done, you know, and are innocent until proven guilty, allegedly. Or didn't do. Doesn't matter. And this idea of Democrats are illegitimate. This idea also isn't necessarily a new one. In uh, how the South won the Civil War, it's an interesting book, and, and it, it, it goes over how the ideologies that the Confederacy, Confederacy embraced were the ideologies that won out after the Civil War. It's not necessarily incorrect, particularly when you study the overthrow of Reconstruction, the pushback against the civil rights movement and everything in between with Jim Crow, 
uh, and, and segregation and redlining in the North and, and much more. But within this, what we see is in the chapter, Oligarchy Rides Again. She talks about, you know, the, the modern incarnation of these ideas. And one of the first modern instances of anti-democratic behavior from the GOP, you know, outside of, you know, we're talking about post Jim Crow. So Jim Crow is an anti-democratic force, fully embraced by Southern politicians, conservative Southern politicians, the, the legacies of the Confederacy was in the early 90s with the GOP in, in really New Jersey, really a, a basically a Republican operative. Well, Jersey's passed a law for, you know, a good law. Yes, they barely opposed a 1993 Democratic expansion of voter registration at certain state offices, known as motor vo uh, voter law, which a New York Times writer noted they saw as special efforts to enroll core Democratic constituencies in welfare and jobless benefit offices. On the heels of that law, key Republican operative Ed Rollins boasted that he had spent hundreds of thousands of dollars suppressing black vote to elect a Republican governor in New Jersey. In 1994, losing candidates were charging that Democrats won elections with voter fraud. One of the leading voices charged in such irregularities had used Rollins as a campaign consultant. In 1996, House and Senate Republicans each launched year-long investigations into what they insisted were problematic elections, one in Louisiana and one in California. Keeping the cases in front of the media for a year helped convince Americans that voter fraud was a serious issue and that Democrats were winning elections thanks to illegal, usually immigrant voters. And we're seeing that now, where the GOP is saying that votes that have come from Democratic cities such as Detroit, and, and most of these, I'd say, are, are majority black. Uh, Madison is, is, is seen a little bit separate of this and wrapped into this as Democrats are seeing the party of multiculturalism and the boogeyman fear of, of social Marxism or, or, or whatever they call it, basically, you know, racial equity. And the idea that Democrats have embraced a multicultural coalition. Now, beyond the fact that they have fully embraced the idea of a multicultural coalition, they are any sense the party that is a multicultural coalition. Now, how well they are, how well, yeah, but that's what the Democratic Party is right now. So effectively, whites that vote Democrat are race traitors and seen as anti-American, making Democrats illegitimate. We've seen this in Wisconsin with the stripping of, you know, our, our Governor Evers' power and authority, particularly during this pandemic and how it's seen that Madison Milwaukee votes were fraudulent and using, what was that, that one voter machine when Milwaukee and, and Madison didn't even use those, those voting machines, right, in, in, in these counties. And the counties that used them, they're not charging. This is something that's pervasive across the United States where there's GOP leaders, state reps uh, across the board saying, well, part of the Texas suit was saying, you know, these other states did these things that were unfair, blah, 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 even though Texas did some of these things such as mail-in voting and mailing ballots. But the key thing is, is that the states that they're challenging, even though that there are red states and, and GOP cities and, and counties that did the exact same things, the problem isn't these things, the problem is the outcome that Democrats won, meaning they're illegitimate. And particularly if these are black and brown cities like Detroit, has to be illegitimate. So Democrats are illegitimate. And this is a long running theme where conservative forces have often seen forces that push have pushed the, the idea of a multicultural democracy as illegitimate as those that stand against the ideals of what it means to be a true American and what a real of what America really stands for. And part of that also the interesting aspect of 
labeling multicultural democracy as anti-freedom in a lot of ways that the bring us of, of calling these things socialists, regardless if they are or not, is, is quite interesting. And, and one, that it, it, it fully embraces the idea that capitalism, or I should say a racial caste system, must exist within capitalism, that that is a core part of capitalism. It says a lot about capitalism. If socialism is a multicultural, multi multi-ethnic democracy, then capitalism, you know, within their minds, uh, is not. Go with that where you will. But we've seen these, these, these ideas before. They're not new. Not new at all. That's really saw the rise of the, the first ideas of voter ID laws um, and or I should say modern incarnation of these things and the undermining of, of democracy and really making Democrats delegitimate or delegitimizing Democrats and, and, and making them illegitimate. I don't know how we turn around from this because they are extremely adept at getting their people to fall in line, partly due to how conservative brain works. To learn more about that, uh, to happen to some uh, George Lakoff who's done some interesting research on the differences between how conservatives and, and liberals in a broad sense think. The other part within this is that cruelty is the point. The GOP is an anti-democratic death cult. The laws or the, the, the COVID relief package the Wisconsin GOP has that effectively just protects businesses from a liability of worker deaths and health and pushes everybody else to go back to work without any uh, protections, aid, assistance, this down the line, means that your purpose as an individual is to serve capital. You are to sacrifice your life to work for capital. And, and this is, is part of one, the caste system, and, and, and part of this idea that the American, that the U.S. government and, and governmental entities, their main purpose is to serve capital. Their idea is that capital is the core aspect of America. We are all to sacrifice ourselves for capital. Of course, most of them, they don't. They don't, but you know, all us, the masses, are to sacrifice us for ourselves for capital. They worship at the altar of, of, of capital, of money, of things, of power, power over, not power with. And, and these are very anti democratic forces in, in of themselves. Make no mistakes about it, private forces can very much be anti democratic forces too, particularly when we deconstruct public entities, public uh, things of uh, public benefit to private entities to serve capital, water, education, housing, healthcare. The core aspects of what makes people survive, not just live, but survive. We privatize much of them to serve capital. We are to sacrifice for capital. And their followers are all too eager to do so, particularly once you start combining in the fact that they've convinced them that a multicultural coalition in multicultural democracy means they can't be free. And it's really the freedom to be white, the freedom to oppress people of color which isn't really freedom, particularly if they're sacrificing everything else, but that's part of the death cult where a lot of these folks would rather die than have universal health care. Particularly if it's seen that black people will benefit. I'd say about 30% of them are willing to do that. That's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. If not more than 30% are willing to do that. They are willing to die. I mean, these are our are, are zealots, our extremists. Some are religious and being evangelical, others are not. 
but they all worship at the altar of capital. They all are capitalist zealots that are willing to die at that altar for their God of markets, of the free market, free market. It's not really a free market, but that's a different thing. This is all quite disturbing, particularly when seemingly it's the vast majority of the GOP, both their voters and the leaders, either like McConnell, who it's all about power and his, his buddies or full on believers, some of the conspiracy. I mean, there's a whole mix. They have their own weird little extremist coalition going on, but they're there. Majority of GOP uh, attorney generals, state GOP attorney generals, signed on to the the letter to the Supreme Court from uh, the suit uh, asking the Supreme Court to overturn a Democratic election. Majority of GOP representatives signed on to this effort. This is not some fringe thing in the party. It's, it's the entirety of the party. And and 60 to 80 percent, depending on the poll of the party, supports or, or believes it's a fraudulent election. That the only way that Trump could have lost is is through Democratic whatever shenanigans, even though somehow the Democrats didn't impact down ballots. Well, there's all sorts of weird uh, logical fally, fallacies and and cognitive dissonance and selective evidence. I mean, uh, down the line, particularly for some true believers. Now, there's some that are, are doing this in bad faith, particularly because they know that it just helps them take power. But they're part of that anti-democratic forces. Some of them are, are true believers in conspiracies. Others are, are true believers in the sense that they just want power and truly believe in, in well, we're just power hungry people. <laughs> Almost sort of that. Um, but all this mixed cruelty is the point. We are to sacrifice ourselves at this altar that is the true America, that capitalism is the true America. Capitalism that was born from genocide and bondage and low-wage work to benefit a few because that is freedom to them. Death on the assembly line for the production of things and the extraction and destruction of natural resources and human resources. Where we go, I don't know. What do we do when this is 30, 40 percent, if not more, of the country? I don't know. What I do know is not many nations survive that large amount of percentage of the population being what they are, which means that we have to be more energetic, mobilized, better. And to a point, we, to an extent, we did that this past election. It also means Democrats need to stop targeting and fighting with the left because the, the, the real threat to everything going on is at the right. If the moderates want to to, to to worry about what's going on at the left, worry about that later when you say the democracy and when you're willing to exercise power in such a way that actually expands democratic rights and is not willing to construct them and is able to pull folks on board and do, do things that help real working people. That's how you really move forward as Democrats. And not this delusion of a past that never really was, of this cooperation and trying to find middle ground as if compromise automatically means the best package necessary. If compromise automatically means democracy. No, democracy means democracy. It's the will of the people. How do you find a middle ground with people that don't see you as a leg legitimate political party. Effectively, the GOP is not a legitimate political party in the sense they're an anti-democratic. Small d, you know, not the anti-democratic Democratic Party, which they very much are, but anti-democracy. And a pusher of death cults of capitalism. And some of that is, you know, I encourage y'all, all of y'all to be anti-capitalist. Doesn't, you don't necessarily have to be a socialist or Marxist or communist. But anti-capitalist just means that you are a full anti-capitalist, where you see that the nature of capitalism is nothing but destructive, extractive, and needs cheap labor 
to survive and part of how it maintains status through a racialized caste system. So I don't know where we go. I don't know what to do. But part of finding a solution is also recognizing and seeing something for what it is. So I think that's the first step, is recognizing that these forces are one that threaten our democracy, fabric of our nation, and bring with them death. That said, thanks for coming. <laughs> Um, mask up, stay safe, don't do anything stupid these holidays, practice a socially distanced Christmas, please. Thanks for coming here to Finding the Warmth of Our Sun at Madison 365. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and YouTube. Hit subscribe and all that fun jazz. Share with your friends if you like friends and family find something informative and interesting. I am Matthew Brown, your host. Hope you have a good and healthy week. And let's hope we have a, well, if the PFC decides a good police chief by the time this airs, because that Portland one looks like a mess. And yes. Anyways, have a good week, folks. This is 365 Media.